All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be solving question 10 from the chapter 7 of Hübler textbook, Engineering Mechanics. And in this one, we have this cable that will fail when subjected to a tension of 2 kilonewtons. We need to determine the largest vertical load P, the frame rail support, and calculate the internal normal force, shear force, and the bending moment at a section passing through point C. So, as always, we're going to start with the free by diagram of the whole system uh, in order to find the unknowns that we have at support A. And we also need to figure out the load P. So, if you want to just show that we have beam that is connected to a pulley in here. So, at A, since we have a pin, we're going to consider two different forces one in X direction and Y, and one in Y direction. We can call our x and y in here so we have the tension in the cable which from the question we know is two kilonewtons we have the force p that is applying on the other on end of the beam and we also have the cable that attaches to here so that's pretty much everything so we are looking at the free body diagram of the beam attached to the pulley and all the external forces that are applying in this system so we are in equilibrium. We're going to use our equilibrium equations. We can start with our fx equals zero since we are in equilibrium. So we only have the force T and ax in x direction. And basically our ax is equal to tension in the cable, which is two kilonewtons. So we can go with our moment equation since we need to figure out the P before we go to our um, sum of all forces in y direction and if we do the moment about point A since we have the most unknowns at point A we can get rid of all the unknowns although now we already found the AX so it really doesn't matter going with point A or the other end of the beam where the P is applying so we get the same thing from both so we have the tension of the cable that makes moment about A and that's going to be in this direction about a so the moment is clockwise we have a negative moment two and the distance that we have is the distance of line of action to point a or what we have in here which is basically this point five plus the radius of the pulley which is point one so it will give us point six or point one plus point so that's the moment of t we also have the moment of p which is in the opposite direction so we'll be counterclockwise so we have a positive moment for p and the sense that we are interested is what we have in here which is uh, basically three times 0 0.75 equals zero now we can find the force p which is 2 times 0.6 divided by 3 times 0.75. Let's calculate this. 2 times 0.6 divided by 3 divided by 0.75. And that's going to give us 0 0.533. Repeating. And that's the first unknown that we were trying to figure out or our force P. So now that we have P, uh, we can do sum of all forces in y direction equals zero. So in y, you basically have a y minus p since it's downward 0.533, and that's pretty much everything. So that shows our a y is also equal to p 0.533 kilonewtons. No negative sign that shows that our assumption for the direction of ax and ay was correct so now we have all the unknowns we are good to go to do our section at point c and go with the free body diagram of this part uh, in order to find the internal forces and the bending moment so I'm just going to draw the free body diagram for the other part of the beam so we can consider one normal force, NC, 
we can consider one shearing force VC and a bending moment MC. And we figured that our A support has AX of 2 kilonewton and AY was equal to our P or 0.533. So now we have the same story. We are in equilibrium. We just have to use our equilibrium equations for the new free body diagram. We can start with sum of all forces in x equals zero. So we're gonna have minus nc minus two kilonewton equals zero. So our nc would be minus two kilonewtons, and the negative sign in here shows that the nc is actually to the right. Can do our f line here equals zero. We have 0.5. 3, 3 minus Vc equals 0, so our shearing force would be 0.533, no negative sign. That shows that Vc is downward. And last one, we're just going to do the sum of all moment about point C. Our clock was positive as always. We have the MC that is our bending moment, or what we are trying to figure out, plus the moment of or well, AX is going to pass through C, so it won't make any moment, but we have the moment of AY, which is in this direction. So, counterclockwise moment plus the force times the distance from point C to the line of action, or I should say vertical distance. So, what we are interested in is this one in here, which if we get back to the original figure we have 0.75 meters so this will be 0.75 meter or equals zero so our mc would be negative 0.533 times 0.75 or it's going to be minus 0.4 kilonewton meter and the negative sign in here shows that the moment is actually clockwise and our assumption was not correct. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.